Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome to this morning's study. Before we begin, can you join me in a word of prayer? The dear, gracious Heavenly Father, we are so thankful for the time that we have each morning to open your word and to receive light into the darkened corners of our minds and hearts, that we can be a light uh, to this sin-sick world. We know, Lord, that uh, the, the Christian life is a difficult one, that we have a cross to bear, and we ask that, uh, that Christ can work in our lives, that he can be there, that we can yoke up with him in carrying the burdens of each day. We ask for your instruction as we seek to understand your word. May your Holy Spirit speak to our hearts. And we pray for one another. And, that, and for those that are watching these videos, that you can lead them into all truth. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, good morning again. So we were addressing this progressive destruction of four yesterday. And we were addressing the wise. They that understand, that is the wise, 7919, among the people. 5971 is the Hebrew number. And we're saying that this is those that are among the 144,000. They shall instruct many. And uh, that instructing many gives us a period, if we add it together, of 8,222, 8, which is 22 years and 187 days. So we thought that was rather interesting. Now, we can count it from September 11th, 2001 to March 16th, 2024. That's 77 days after the 1260 days from July 18, 2020 to December. I should. To December 30, 2023. Let's say see footnote 33. That's going to deal with that period of time to March 16th, 2019. Plus 490 days that leads us to July 18, 2020. So I guess we could probably add those together. I'm going to have a chart of this here. So let's take a look at this chart that I'm working on. And I don't know if it all makes sense. I don't know if I'm putting too much stuff into the chart itself. So I wanted to mark uh, the March 16th, 2019. So that is the grieved return and have indignation against the Holy Covenant, right? So that grieved return indignation, those three steps. For 13,433 days, if you add the Hebrew numbers together. And that brings us to March 16th, 2019. And then there's 490 days uh, to July 18, uh, 2020. And uh, so we just note that. And then there's 1,260 days from July 18, 2020 to December 30th, 2023. So that's when Jeff is going to speak. Right. So prior to that, he doesn't speak. He just uh, he has written some papers. But here he, we hear him publicly for the first time. Um, Sixty three days later, which I don't have in this chart, he's going to start his regular studies with the Canadian American groups. But we have 77 days to this March 16th, 2024. So if we go from 9-11 and we take the instruct, that's 995 and the many. 7227, add it together, 8,222, 187 days and 22 years. So that can be representative of 187 or July 18 or the 18th of July 2020. So it has all of the digits of July 18, 2020, just not the zeros. <clears throat> so I don't know what people think about this as far as um, does it make sense to people that we're doing this? But definitely the 8222 as a symbol representing July 18, 2020. Whether uh, counting to March 16th from September 11 is exactly where we would put that 22 years and 187 days. So that's something people would have to figure out whether that makes sense or not. We also discussed... Because of those 77 days, it reminded me of the 77 weeks. And so in here, we have this 
July 4th, 2020. That's the end of the 100 days of prayer. Some things I still haven't finished putting in here. So it's 539 days. So from the end of the 100 days of prayer to December 25th, 2021 is 77 weeks. So it's just something we note in there. Now, this June 30th, 2019, does anybody remember what that was about? Because I haven't drawn the rest of that in there. So this is another line from 9-11. I have to put in. So this is 6,501 days. And that's from adding... This phrase <clears throat> shall fall by the sword. So this is now addressing the progressive destruction of four. So we have the instructing of many. This is light of truth, the message of July 18, 2020. For March 16th, 2024, what we have there is a presentation uh, that I did, number 10 of uh, the structure, uh, the symbolic use of numbers. And in that study, I'm addressing Samuel Snow's letters and the connection to July or not to July, but to um, uh, 2018. So that basically that October 13th period when we're going to uh, figure out everything dealing with uh, not just November 9th, but also July 18, 2020. So we have these March 16th, the one in 2019, the one in 2024, which is past. And those are five years apart. And we've, say that the five years represents the foolish and the wise. Now, this June 30th date, that's going to be the camp meeting where Tess is presenting that there's no Sunday law, and uh, that's the last day of the camp meeting. So that's the June 30th date. And so this period of time, I'm going to put this in here. Um, so this is a lot to put in here, so I'll just... So so we got a bunch of dates in here, and probably I have too much in this chart. There's some stray things over there. This is from another chart. If we are going to look at all these periods of time, so I have that grieved return indignation just to give us that March 16th, 2019 date. Whether that's really important in this chart or not, um, I also have a March 16th, 2013 date, and I can't remember why. I know I have a guitar built on that date, but that was just not connected to this. Just uh, was something about March 16th, 2013 that I can't remember why it showed up. So if anybody remembers, if if I talked about it, that would be helpful. I'm, just, I'm looking at the calendar converter of all these different numbers that I have here. Okay. Something else I forgot talking about okay it's probably just a mathematical mistake oh i see what i did wrong okay sorry about that i'm thinking i made a mistake on something that i was doing that i haven't shown you yet an interesting detail is if we go from march 16th 2019 to march 16th 2024 it's going to be a period of 1,827 days, so I should probably put this in here. So that's another thing that gives us this symbol of, oh, that's the other thing I wanted to look at, is this. So. That's the symbol of the July uh, 18th again, ain't it? Yeah, yeah, so we got that same symbol showing up, July 18th symbol, and that right one, no, no, it's supposed to be back to here. Okay, so the so the March sixteenth uh, shows up there. Okay, and and uh, so that makes sense. Now, um, notice I have the Hebrew number six eight eight five from nine eleven to July eighteenth. That's the number of days uh, from July, from September eleventh to July eighteen twenty twenty. And I just wanted to make a note there that this is in Nehemiah. The only place this word shows up is in Nehemiah three thirty one. And that verse is, uh, and after him repaired Malachiah, the goldsmith's or the refiner's son. And that word uh, refiner or goldsmith is 6885. So I just thought it was interesting. If you go from 911 to July 18, you have this word refiner or goldsmith. And unto the place of the Nethanim. So it's connected to a message to the Nethanim. So that's interesting. 
So I don't, don't know if it really relates to this line, but I just thought I'd put it in there. Now, go back to what we're studying here, to our document. We were addressing, of course, the whys, right? So the 144,000. And this number 7919 look, doesn't look like I put a footnote with it. I think I was looking at it, but I never came to any conclusions about it. The thing that's interesting about the number itself is it's the 1,000th prime number. So is is that um, significant? I would think it is. Now, why would that be significant? 7919 is the 1,000th prime. Anyone? Now, it's a period of 21 years and 249 days. We haven't done anything with that. Um, if we counted from 911, 7919 would just give us May 18th, 2023. I think we looked at that. What was May 18th, 2023, Angela? I think you. Uh, I didn't think it had that much importance, except that uh, May 18th was John Paul II's birthday. But again, I don't remember the year. Yeah, he was okay. Born. So Pope John Paul II's birthday. Okay. That was it. So whether that's significant or not, probably not. I mean, there's just some dates are just going to show up that happen to be something. I don't see any context to there, but we know that the that they that understand those are the whys. That's why we have 144,000 there, and it being the thousandth prime number, obviously the 144,000. So we we'll refer to that, and then we were looking at so the faithful shall fall by the sword. So that's where we're going to add 3782. And 2719, do with that. And that's, that's the 6,501 days. So we're going to connect that to test with the no Sunday law. So we're saying that, that, uh, that's referring to this progressive destruction of four within this movement. Now we have, we, we haven't addressed by flame so much. We did talk about it a little bit by captivity and by spoil. So we have these. And then this is uh, many days. So the days is actually the word there, 3117. So we say that refers historically to 1260 years. And then I was trying to make an application that this is the progressive destruction of four, the four generations of Adventism, though we might apply it to this movement itself. So if we have by sword, by I'm flame. Looking at that March 6th. Sorry, Theodore. I've been looking. I've been trying to focus on this March 16th, and I was thinking, hey, Jack, Jack and I are Jehoiachin was taken captive, March yeah. 16th, 597, yeah. right? Yeah. There's a captivity there. The movement was taken captive by the Omega, Parminder, and Tess, and I think there's somewhere else where March 16th comes comes. Was what was it the dedication of the temple? Or that date is somewhere prominent in history, and I don't know. And then you have March fifteenth, and it's the eyes of March when uh, when when a Caesar was was assassinated. March fifteenth, usually that would be, but yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, definitely to Jehoiachin's captivity, and and that is marking because what we're saying is that this progressive destruction of four here. Um, she'll fall by the sword, by flame, by captivity, and by spoil. This parallels the progressive destruction of four under the four seven times. So that would be the same. Okay. Well, there it is. And finally, I'm starting to clue in. Okay. Yeah. So that's why the March 16th in 597 attaches to that symbol. Uh, but here we also have, you know, like Tess's presentation about there being no Sunday law. So we, we have this. 3852 three, burned at the stake is that's the historical application. People being burned at the stake, that's the flame. Captivity, that's prison, spoil. And, and this is from um, Swearingen, right? So that's where he put, you know, economic hardships. Um, but you know, we can we can accept that uh, by spoil representing that. So these are the things that that happened historically. 
and we're making an application to our history. Now, I put that, that this 1260 years represents 1844 to 1989, the four generations of Adventism, but, you know, it might better apply in the present truth application uh, to what's what's happened within the movement itself. And um, so I was doing some math here. So that's what I always do. If we're going to take these numbers, so we have, uh, now if we just took the numbers 2719, that's the sword, plus the flame, 3852, plus the captivity, 762. Two eight plus nine six one. Um, we get fifteen thousand one hundred and sixty. Okay, that was it. Okay, so I don't know. This might be obscure. So if we add all of these things together, fall by the sword, by flame, by captivity, and by spoil, uh, we get the number eighteen thousand nine hundred and forty-two. Now that number. So I'll just show you here. So this number here is related to the mind calendar structure connected with my birth, dealing with the end of the mind calendar. So, so 52 years, right? So I'm going to turn, uh, 52 years, uh, 777 days after December, December 21st, 2012. And that's going to be 18,993, right? So 52 years is, I'll do it this way. Uh, so if I go minus 18,993, you're going to see it's 51 days short of that. Now the number itself, this number here in years is 51 years and a decimal. And obviously, uh, if we know that uh, 52 years is uh, 18720, then you can see that this is going to be 222 days longer. So if I go back here, let's go minus, oops, here, this one, minus 18720, I get 2000 or 222. So it's 51 years, 222 days. If you add 51 days to that, you get 52 years. So I don't know if that's significant, if that means anything to anyone. It's just, it's just a difference between some numbers, but that's, that's, um, that period of time, 51 years, 222 days. If we added all of those together, then maybe there's some other way that we could look at it. There's the number of it all added together. Now that number itself, its factorization is two times three times seven times 11 times 41. So I don't see anything particular about it. I don't see any significant divisors other than 77. It's divisible by 77, which might be significant. 246 times 77. It's got the 26th day of the fourth month symbol in it. Okay. So those are the things, you know, we look at maybe they, they sometimes don't yield anything specific. For the 246, it could get the 26th day of the fourth month. Yeah. Yeah, times 77. Yeah. You know, I could also add the days, 3117 to that. You know, and I'm going to get like this 22,059. That's going to be a period of 60 years, about 100. 44 days. Well, it's kind of interesting. So yeah, so if we added all of that together, so that's going to be the phrase that they shall fall by the sword, by flame, by captivity, and by spoil many days. So if we took all of that and added it together, we get a number that represents 60 years and 144 days. Is that significant? Uh, the only thing, I sometimes count things from my birthday. Okay, that's the best thing to do. But if I count uh, 60 years and 144 days, 
that's going to bring me to June 30th, 2023. Whether that's matters or not, it, it just gives us another June 30th date. So four years after June 30th, 2019. And it's a Friday. I don't know. It could be a study that we did then. Sometimes that connects, but uh, I don't know if that's the best place to put it. Okay. So all we can say here is that this does represent, you know, with the with the 60 years, I just wonder how would we apply 60 years? What's 60 as a symbol? I mean, I'm going to put this in here in our notes. So we got um, all of these. I guess the simpler way to do it would just be copy this and edit well, 60, Daniel 3, 1 comes to mind. Uh, Nebuchadnezzar, the king, made an image of gold. His height was three score cubits, and the breadth thereof six cubits. He set it up in the plain of Dura in the province of Babylon. So there you have the six and the 60. So it's a Babylonian number, at least yeah, in this instance. It's, it's a Babylonian number. But, you know, we have it in connection here with the symbol of the 144,000 as well. Um, so this equals 60 years and 144 days. Why does it say years? Okay, so 60 years and 144 days. Is there anything else? There seems to me there must be something else about 60 years. Uh, wasn't Jeff in his 60th year when he got the funding to set up the School of the Prophets? Possibly. Um, let me think. Because that was 2000. And yeah, yeah, he was in his 60th year. Well, he's going to turn 60 that year anyway. Yeah, in 2011, but later in the year. So he would have been 59 technically when he received it. I mean, you become mature when you're 60. And so, you know, 144,000, at least that's what I think. But anyway, what else could it mean? I mean, I'm just looking at some stuff here on the internet about the biblical meaning of the number 60. It's associated with the time of the time and seasons. It represents completeness or the full measure of time. Biblically, this can be seen through the concept of the Jubilee, 50 years plus the base number of 10 representing fulfillment or completion. I don't know. Periods of trial. Give some examples. 50 years plus 10. Well, then, then you would have wait for Wait for the descent of, of, of the Holy Spirit. Wasn't that a 50 plus 10? No, that was 40, yeah. 40 plus 10. Hmm. Okay. Oh, well. Yeah. Um, I mean, we know it as, as a measure of time, just because of, you know, like there's 60 seconds in a minute, 60 minutes in an hour, 60 generations from Adam to Jesus. Well, definitely the 144,000 symbol. With 144 days, 60 years and 144 days. But we're saying that this is referring to this progressive destruction of four. So I'm not particularly sure what that would mean. Now we could take each of these individually as spans of time. Now the 7628 number, that uh, one I looked up. So if you go from 911, it brings you to July 31st, 2022. I don't know anything in particular regarding that, but I just, Put it in there. That's if we're going to count it. That's where it would go. Now the two seven one nine. If we went from June seventh, nineteen eighty two, it's going to bring us to one week past November ninth, nineteen eighty nine. So it's not going to because that's two seven one two days. And the three eight five two, the flame. That one I had something with it. Can't remember now. Yeah, there was something I had with that, but it, it wasn't major or anything. But if if we're going to try to tie this in more specifically, there might be spans of time within what happened regarding, uh, you know, Parminder's group and so forth. So we have the one date, um, fall by the sword, that's going to tie us to to Tessa's presentation from nine eleven. But the burned at the stake, I don't have any specific thing. The captivity doesn't give me anything solid. The spoil, 961. The interesting thing about uh, 961, around would probably figure that out pretty quick. So some numbers we have that 
are just uh, a square root. So it's not a prime number, but it is 31 times 31. So I'm going to put that in there. So it's 31 squared. So why would that matter? 31 significant. So that gives us the year of the cross. Now, it is kind of interesting. Um, so I'm going to deal with this one. So 3852, because this gives us another thing that points to the cross. So we're going to say that this year, you know, this is the year of the cross. So you've got the crucifixion in the midst of the week. We also have, uh, this gives us 31 weeks times 2, which equals 62 weeks, right? The center of which is 217 B.C. Well, it's not 217 B.C., but it's 217 years, right? So that's 343 years, right? So hopefully that makes sense to people. Now, when it comes to this other number then, 3852, this has some interesting significance. So from November 9th, so I'll do it this way, from 11, 9, 89 to 9, 11 is a period of, what's it, four, three, two, four days. And if we subtract, H3852 is equals 472, which equals April 27th, let's say 31 AD. That's the cross. Okay, so, so what we see is we see these symbols that tie us to the cross. So we have the spoil ties us to the cross with 961 as being uh, the square of 31, the year of the cross. We have um, this number here. If we take the number of days and we, we look at that number, we say that it symbolizes the cross. And, of course, this line is dealing with November 9th to 9-11. So that we get this, uh, the 27th four, of course, in reverse. So I could probably do it like this. Shows that it's reversed. Does that seem that these symbols are tying together? Is this too obscure, or is this okay? Because no, if I don't find it too obscure. It's kind of the way okay. my mind operates. Finding yeah, okay. all these symbols and what they mean. Right. So, so what we end up having here is we have these symbols that tie us to to the cross, to the symbols of the cross, because God's people being persecuted is they persecuted Christ, they also shall persecute you. And so historically, this is referring to the 1260 years, but we can apply it uh, to this movement. Now, so the 1844 to 1989, 40 generations of Adventism, that doesn't really seem to pan out. So if I was going to address this, uh, we just would say a progressive destruction of four in this movement. So it's a progressive destruction of four in this movement. And, and we can see how that relates to basically the distortion of God's word, uh, the type of persecution that's going to happen that we could align with the idea of the cross. Now, the captivity... 7628, we haven't addressed specifically, other than we, we tried looking at the span of time, but it didn't really seem to match up with anything. The number itself, it's four times 1907. No, I'm just doing some math here. So it's uh, 20 years and 323 days, 7,628 days. Right, so it brought us to July 31st, 2022 from 9-11. But we don't have anything significant for that date that I know of, other than it's July 18, 2022 under Julian. So maybe it should be placed somewhere else. I mean, all we can say is it's, as a symbol, it does have a July 18th symbol attached to it, but it's just 
in 2022, not 2020. So I'm just trying to look at different spans here. No, I can't find anything with that. Anyway, so the 7628, other than just that symbol, we, we'll just have to leave it at that. So, so we go from, so it just brings us to that symbol. So if we count from 911, it brings us to July 31st, which symbolizes, well, that symbolizes the cross too, doesn't it? Okay. So if it brings us to, from 9-11, right? We're using lots of these spans from 9-11 or connected to 9-11 in some way to July 31st, 2022. That ties us to the midst of the week, right? That is 31-7. Okay, so can we see all of these things tie us to the cross? And they show us the symbol Right, so it's a symbol that connects to July 18th as a symbol of the cross. Is that satisfactory for people? But this message of July 18th is a cross. It um, is a progressive destruction of four that occurs within the movement that is part of this testing message. Does that seem satisfactory? It, because that's what the symbols point to. A lot of them point to the cross in this case by connecting to 911. So can we accept that? That that's what this no, is. I think it fits. I really think it fits. Yeah, I, I think it fits as well. I mean, I think it's, it's, uh, really solid, but it, it is an obscure way of getting there, right? So. Um, I'm going to have to draw out another chart, just kind of showing each one of these and their relationships uh, to 9-11. But every time we connect these to 9-11, each of these numbers, they produce symbols that represent the cross. And um, so I think that's important, important. They also connect us to the captivity of Jehoiachin. And if we remember in dealing with the progressive destruction of four is that Jehoiachin's captivity is the one that connects us to the midnight cry message, right? It's also going to connect us to Ezekiel because remember Ezekiel's taken captive at the same time Jehoiachin is. That's March 16th, 597 BC, right? And we also know that when we count from the captivity to the destruction of Jerusalem in 70 AD, it's going to be 666 years, so a symbol of the Sunday law. So this definitely all fits together. Everything fits together, the 144,000, the whys. You know, I just wish I had something better for the 60 years. But, um, you know, it does connect us to the idea of, you know, 60 years is 60 times 360, which is 21,600. And, of course, that is... Uh, Six times six times six, right? So, um, so if we did it as prophetic time, that 60 years times 360 gives us that symbol of 666 as well. And, and Angela already connected that to the image on the plane of Dura, the golden image. So the Sunday law. So we have all of these things here. We have a, a message that's rejecting the Sunday law when we get to that date of June 30th, 2019 as well. So, so I think these things fit. That's my view, but other people have to decide for themselves whether they fit. I mean, we have already, we already understood this. We're just seeing symbols that help us, that help substantiate that, right? So these aren't the main arguments for what we're saying about the present truth application of this, but it definitely supports it. Now, uh, when they shall fall, they shall be holpen with a little help, right? So we know that that connects to the earth helping the woman in Revelation 12, verse 16. So the 1260 years, obviously, that's the period of time historically that this is referring to. So the historical application is very solid here. Now, as far as this referring to what's happening what's or what has happened in this movement, we have these numbers, five eight two six whether we just you know add some of these together 
I mean, if we added these together, um, hoping with a little help, we get 5826 plus 5828, so the verb and the noun, and then we'd add in the little 4592. So the number we get, 16,246. If we put that into a span of time, it's going to be about 40 some years. 44 years and 175 days. So I don't know what to do with that phrase. 16246. Well, it's almost uh, 126 times 129. It's 126 times 129 is 16254. So it's eight days difference. I don't know. So whether we can do anything with those numbers or not, I don't know. So I don't know what to do with that. But but many shall cleave to them with flatters. So this is going to take a bit of time, this latter part, this flattery's part. But now when they shall fall, they shall be hoping with a little help. Hmm. I'm going to have to think about that a bit more. Well, when did this movement really seem to fall? Like that's what I'm asking myself. Was it after P&T split and took a whole load of us with them? Or was it at July 1820 when there was such a schism made? Well, you like know, Jeff, uh, Jeff is saying it's July 18th. <laughs> 20 pretty much that we were wrong about that but and other people are saying that so well if we go to the, I mean Jeff is just inconsistent there so um, I mean the vast majority of people left the movement with Parminder's movement not with July 18 but also you know he keeps using July 18 but I don't see how he can how he can use it at all if it's an error, I mean, where would the parallel be in Millerite history? Now, he's trying to say it's the first disappointment, but the first disappointment wasn't based upon some specious error. It's not like the first disappointment was something that should be uh, confessed, you know, unless he's going to argue that, that, that that's the case. I mean, we admit the mistake, but there's a lot different than to saying that, you know, it's a sin. Was Miller sinning in predicting, you know, the end of the prophetic periods? Did he have repented of that? Does Adventism need to repent of that? So that's always a problem. Um, so, so it's definitely progressive, you know, these errors that are brought in. And, and if we're going to parallel these, these things, this falling by the sword, well, you know, this is sort of a, a spiritual battle or a scriptural battle that's brought up um, with Tess and Parminder. I mean, and you could say, well, you know, the date that that gives us is that camp meeting in Alberta. Maybe for me personally, that's where I see the issue for the first time. The flame, you know, burned at the stake. This is the character assassination, the captivity. Um, You know, we, all of these point to the cross, uh, the spoil. You know, again, it gives us this, you know, 31 squared. And so this happens within this movement. Now we could say maybe the, the days, the 3117 represents something. So I don't know what the best way to deal with this is. Oh, and I see a uh, fall by the sword. I think of Saul falling on his sword. Yeah, well, this is more war, right? So not not suicide, but but the sword can represent the word of God. Yes, I know. Right. So. But in a sense, aren't there many of us who are falling on the sword because we're trying to reject? Well, there other people are calling it time setting or numerology. You know, this is what bothers me so much because <laughs> it's like if you reject the numbers, oh my, my, then you're rejecting prophecy. You're rejecting the whole foundation of our faith, based on, or a lot of it anyway. 
Yeah. Um, now, the, thing, the thing is, I do know a bit about numerology because I knew this person who was into numerology. And what we're doing is not numerology because um, we're not using numbers magically. We're using them. Yeah, at, well, this is what we're being accused of. I mean, uh, some people won't say that blatantly, but this is what they're doing. And to me, it's just like saying, well, you don't want to apply your mind to study these things like the Millerites did and like the early SDAs did, like the church what refuses to do now. You know, just, yeah. Well, if we don't believe it, it is, it's really a taxing. I know for me, it's extremely taxing, especially yeah. when I've got a million other things here to deal with. But yeah, numbers, I've got to apply myself to this, you know. <laughs> but numbers are symbols in scripture. And that's not yeah. new. And, and, and every one of us, you know, has used numbers and understood their symbolic significance. Um, and I always go back to like 70 AD, but you know, we got 666. Is 666 numerology? Well, I don't and, say it is. I mean, this is what it's coming to. I, I can't even talk with some of these people. And it's just, it's just ridiculous, you know. Like, yeah. So if you're like going to say, you cannot say, reason with them. Is numerology, or you're going to say, well, you know, if we take Jesus' name, you know, in Greek and it adds up to 888, is that numerology? I mean, is the 2300 days numerology? Is the 70 weeks numerology? I mean, I, I just don't quite understand how people can't see the difference between numbers as symbols and, and the magical use of numbers that you see in numerology. You know, divining your your future or your life by, you know, choosing numbers or avoiding numbers as if they somehow are magical. And they're not, right? Now, numbers, God uses them as symbols throughout Scripture, and we can see them clearly. But it's not numerology to use them as symbols. And that's what we're looking at here. We're looking at these numbers, and we can say, well, we have symbols of the cross, We've already established from the text itself, without the use of numbers, of what it means, right? Historically, we can see that this is referring to this history of time, the 1260 years, by comparing scripture with scripture. So the fact that these numbers give us support for that as symbols, uh, I don't think that we can ignore that. You know, when we deal with the 1260 years, we have the earth helping the woman. And and now we have to look at that in our movement. What does that mean? Now, when they shall fall, they shall be hoping with a little help. Now, to me, this must in some way represent what happened in the movement. That is, what happened in the movement was all of this persecution but God helped us in some way. And, oh, and so he still is. Yeah. But that way should it's be returning to the roots, returning to the studies. Why, why did apparently, and I say apparently July 18th, 20 fail, you know, well, they're saying because we were wrong in time setting. And I, I posted a few weeks ago. No, it was our hearts that were wrong. And we're <laughs> still Laodicea. We, that just the just the fact that you, for example, are excluded from the studies from the from the being posted as a link proves mm -hmm. we're still Laodicea. Obviously, some people read that, and obviously they're not happy with it. But it's mm -hmm. true; they're disobeying Ellen White. I put that in. We're supposed to be counseling together. Forget about personalities. Like I don't really give a Katui. Or what happened between you and so and so and so and so and so and so. Let's just focus on the word. I, I'm just so fed up. Like sometimes I don't even want to go on to the other side or figure like I know last Sabbath I really blew it because I went on a rant about certain things. But uh, yeah. I don't know where to begin with this. Yeah, and the I thing mean, is, all you can do is intercede in prayer. We we could have been studying together from the beginning, but even by July 18th, even before July 18th, there was definitely um, resistance against me as a person for whatever reason. You know, I'm, I've never really understood it. I mean, I understand I'm, I'm kind of straightforward and stuff, but that's not really a very good reason. 
So, so obviously, you know, we could have studied together before July 18th, and we could have studied together after July 18th and followed the counsel given in the spirit of prophecy. But people allow their personal feelings to interfere with their Bible study, which we can't do. And, and I'm definitely not a perfect person. I'm not, I'm not great at the social, whatever it is that people do. So I don't. Neither am I. And I'm hated for the same reason. Yeah. But, but I try. Like, it's not like I'm totally, you know, don't care. Like you just have, you know, I, I try to work with people. I try to understand them. I try to sympathize with them. But the thing that matters the most is the study of the Bible, right? What does the Bible say about something? I don't really care about, you know, people's personal feelings in that regard, right? Your personal feelings don't really have anything to do with truth. And I can't do anything about somebody's feelings. So, you know, you point people to the scriptures and you yourself try to understand what's what's happening. Now, so there is something about this helped with a little help that we need to understand because it definitely does relate. And this is what we're going to try to look at. What is it that God gave us that was to help? Us? And, and it should be here by comparing scripture with scripture, by following Miller's rules, it should give us some information that helps us to understand what happened. We can look at the text itself. You know, they're going to cleave to them with flatteries. We know that, that this is the type of thing that has happened in the movement. Uh, some of the understanding shall fall, right? So historically, we look at this as the Millerite movement to try them, to purge them, to make them white. We can see how that relates to the three angels' messages. So we know that this help here is a help that comes in connection with these three angels' messages and even to the time of the end because it is yet for an appointed time. So there are symbols here in this part of this verse, verse 35, that we need to understand moving forward. We need to understand what this message is to us. We can understand it historically. The historical application is very solid, but we should have symbols here that can help us understand that we are on the right track and that it should be uh, a message of comfort to us and direction. So we'll look at this tomorrow. So let's close with prayer. Dear Father in heaven, thank you for the study here this morning. And we know, Lord, we are moving very slowly, examining each detail. And uh, we know, Lord, that you have a purpose in this. So um, we just pray that you can be with us throughout this day. Guide and direct us in all that we do. And bring us together again to study your word is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen.